Did you guys know that Isoken is about loneliness and, and uh, inadequacy? Kill yourself. But my favorite character is like Midori. I, you know the worst Tsubame. part? I came into this episode and I was like, I'm going to get so heated at some things that I know people have said about this show. But nothing and now, makes you matter than what you've heard. And now I don't even have, I'm just drained emotionally. I have nothing to say about Isaacin. I have I I would have had a lot to say, but there's a man who makes <laughs> content on YouTube, and he made an Isaacin review, and it's full of lies and untruths and just wrong information. Things that if you watched the show and actually paid attention to the conflict of the show, you would know. Well, but you well, said the wrong thing. We'll, 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 we'll get to that. Well, the best well, part of that, well, to, real quick, I just want to say my favorite part of the video is when he talks about how the show is about and is made with such passion, yet the video in itself is lit for one of the most passionless things I've ever seen. Like, yet he gave the show 10 times. Dude, he watched episodes six or seven times in between a week. <laughs> so, the patrons of, if you're, if you're a patron, you guys voted on the patron poll. For a show known as Hidamari Sketched for us to watch Hidamari! next time. Sorry. Oh. That's the most, that's more passionate in an entire 13 minute Isaac video. Well, this is an actual, this is a show that a human being has actually watched, like, what, two or three, I've watched it two or three times, and yeah, it's a ten, it's my favorite anime ever. Crash Door's longest yeah boy ever when he finds out Hidamari Sketched is the show we're watching. Yes! Oh god, sorry. Oh my yeah, god. So that's oh what we're god. watching. We're watching um seasons one and two. We're fucking lunatic. Alright. Yeah. Well and, you'll be uh, uh, hopefully hopefully you guys like it. Yeah. And then we'll all be lunatics. So, one out of ten. So next time so I mean sure. You'll make fuck. me cry, Vindy. This episode we watched Keep Your Hands Off Azoken, a series by um the famous anime director Masaki Yuasa, who's made such shows as Devil Man, Crybaby, and nothing else, apparently. <laughs> Good director. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of his stuff. I've only seen Tatami Galaxy and Ping Pong, both of which are some of my favorite anime. He's behind so... Devil Man, Crybaby, Ping Pong, uh, Kaiba. Mind game. Yeah. I know what he's done. I'm not saying I don't know what the man's done. I'm just saying I've only seen two of his works, and I like both of them. So I like one of them. I think it's safe to say I, I like Tatami Galaxy. It's a 9.5. I like that it. That was the first episode of the Weeb Club, and we already know like how it. that went down. And this is probably going to be the last one when we all fucking commit group suicide after this one. <laughs> I'm literally killing myself. No, like, all right, so in, in this group, I am going, going to say that I, what the what, am uh, is Subame. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Subame? I don't know. I don't know. Why would Can you, you ask a certain names, YouTuber? Could you use their real names? Fine. Well, I don't I, have to go on the wiki. Mizusaki. I'm fucking Mizusaki. <laughs> fucking. You know, actually, I was going to say, I thought about this while watching the show, right? I think that our dynamic is in the Isaacin dynamic, but it isn't that we are each the same girl. I think it's that at any single point in time, are... one of us, two of us, like two of us are Asuka, Asakusa and Mizuka. What's her name? Mizuka. Mizuzaki. Mizusaki, sorry, I always said Mizukami, but I knew that wasn't right. Mizusaki, and then the other one's Kanamori. Like, at any point, it switches, right? We just right, So, right, basically, right. Like we a, have like one collective point. brain cell, and it just sort of shifts around, and yeah. we like become a, Kanamori. At some point, like, like sometimes, right, Kraus and I'll be dumb over one piece, right? And then what's Kanamori? And he's, you know, yelling at us. Or sometimes, what now will be screaming at each other and be retards. About MHA and then, or Black will be Clover, Kanamori. and I'll be the Kanamori. Right, and yeah. you're Kanamori, right? It, like, shifts around. And during and then, the like, fucking, all of tonight... Um, Vindy's had the brain cell, and it's me and Wada were screeching at, uh, over whatever and everything. Yeah, during the Watamote episode, that was the fucking. <laughs> Ugh, I never want to relive that Watamote episode. Basically, Wada 10? not Watamote. Izo Ken, Izo Ken is the show that all of Vandy Twitter and all of Vandy Two has been saying, and basically going going around saying it's like the second coming of Jesus Christ, and it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's good. 
it's good. It's fine. <laughs> because here's the thing. I've come to realize what really attracts a lot of people and why a lot of people like Yuasa. And I don't blame them because Yuasa is, st is very much a style person, I would say. He's yeah, well, like, because I was thinking guy. about it when I when I started the show, because we talked about it at the beginning of the, the last season with Koisura, because you mentioned you liked the Koisura OP. It was your favorite OP of the season. And you, you said, yeah, easy breezy. And then I was like, okay. And I, I got that. And apparently that was in the back of my mind for three months because I was thinking about it watching the show. And the OP is, it, it's, it's, it's fine. But it's, but the reason I can see like the reason why this one grabbed people rather than Koisura's, even though Koisura's I definitely think is better, is because this one's kind of stylish. And that's it's it. It, it's Masaki stylish. Yuasa it has a style that if a you lot. can't you can't point at and go generic, generic, which is a you know pouring buzzword as we've you know talked about before. But like it's different, so that means it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. Aizuken, Aizuken's opening is probably like let me think. Cause last cause last season we had I give it an eight. We had Black Catcher. We had we had Star Maker. We had uh, Coaster Asteroids opening. You know. Yeah, it's, it's a fun OP. I never. Well, I you know. liked Maji Records opening more than this one. Okay, that's a weird take. That's mm. a weird take. It's I mean, a I, very well, what, strange uh, take. Fate, strange uh, fate. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, just really liked the song in Maji Records opening. Look, yeah, the easy, song I liked. Easy breezy. Like in general, I like I like how like it's put together. But then right after the uh, after it does all the wacky shit, it just becomes what the titles floating around my a bunch favorite of space well, so my like, favorite yeah. part in easy breezy specifically is when it has like the th the girl it's like it's it's like the one girl like it'll be one girl at a time and it has like the thing come in around the borders of the screen and like circle around them you know what i mean yeah, okay, that and part it's got was all cool. things bunch of things representing all the yeah, yeah, attacks like associated easily, with, yeah i think the best part of the opening uh visually and I guess it's also kind of neat that it is, like, it does use a lot of reused footage and low, like, things that, you know, short cutty kind of things. And that's kind of a running thing with the show is finding, you know, stylistic and interesting ways to make compromises so that you gotta, like, be interesting and good and, you know, fulfill your, the, like, what you want to do production-wise while also, like, being able to actually make something in time because right. of the deadline. Which, you know, um, just, you know, anime. So... To explain to people who are, for some reason, you don't know what this show is, um, Keep Your Hands Up, Azo Ken is a show about a hobbit and, and a and craft dwarf. A hobbit, they... a sor supermodel, and Sayo from Love Lab. Um, yeah. Who decide? Who? Yeah. Yeah. So they hang. They um. They form a. They form a film no, club. The girls aren't supposed to be pretty, so she's not a supermodel. Shut the obviously. fuck up. She. <laughs> she. Uh, they form in a film club because they did because they're. Because the model one, Mizusaki, her parents are forbidding her from joining the anime club because they want her to be an actress. So they. But she they, wants to animate, and they want to make anime. But they so they yeah the film club Azo Ken. Yeah, and that's their compromise. And the entire series is basically just sort of like them experiencing like what it is to make an anime and shit like that. Well, there's a little bit more going on. Well, of course there is, Vindy. But I'm just saying what the show is. It's what it is so like yeah if you want to be stupid dumb fucking idiot anti-tubers not even talking about how like the town is <sighs> talk about the town vindy you no clearly you want know to talk what else town. here's what there's a thing about azo kin that i, about I was wa i was watching it weekly but then like a certain someone we all know who it is was tweeting on twitter.com weekly about how it was saying something about the nature of art in general and how, how it was... would they be saying that they never have a twitter no that's not that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about oh, the man okay. who thinks that ratatouille is humanity's pinnacle of like oh of, sorry like, there's too many people that we make fun of i can't keep up <laughs> well basically this man kept tweeting about how azo ken is one of the greatest things ever because it like it Claim, it claims shit about the nature of art in general and you know it's basically just stroking no. off his own like ideals and shit and i was like isaac is just show about verisimilitude boom there you go i'm not wrong you are not wrong at all and it's great because it okay in the first couple episodes as they're trying to make this show the thing i hate the most in like any tube this and any kind of media discourse is people going but the, the realism the realism and in this show the two characters who are the ones making the anime, who are the most idealistic of them all, are crying about Unga Bunga realism. And the one character with the functioning brain goes, that shit don't matter as long as you make good shit. 
And I, but then it was interesting because later they got reversed in a, like an interesting way. I think, I well, I think what's interesting is that like, I mean, you know, very like very similitude even shows up in the subs at one point. I think that's how you pronounce. It. I don't fucking know. My brain doesn't work. Yeah, um, it happens in the subs. Yeah. Yeah, and so like, it, like, it's very like, okay. I think if you watch, okay, so I'm just gonna address this now. Um, people like to go, uh, like I've already heard it and seen it. It's like, oh, uh, uh, Shirabako, uh, just watch Shirabako instead. I think there's a big difference between this and Shirabako, even just in terms of the anime production side. I think Shirabako gets way more into the technical, visual parts of an anime, right? Way more into this is a storyboard. These are different animation techniques, like, right? This is they, hard there's to yeah, the, like there's there's you see sound in both, but with uh, Shirabaki, you literally see how sign design is like the, like my friend who actually do, has done experimented with that before. He said like yeah, this is basically the process is just done it, it, like in the show it's done in like within seconds, where an actual sound designer would be fiddling with like uh, making a monster roar for like you know minutes to hours. Um, right. But it's it's basically the same process where with this there's like a character who does sound and they record some sound and then you see them put the sound in the anime, but that like you don't you know it's they don't right. you don't you don't see the whole technical like, process here's the it. thing because i was gonna say a lot of any tubers and all of any tours say like uh sure this show is very technical this is way more technical than shirabako was and i'm like <laughs> what universe were you living in bro <laughs> they, well, were... they didn't watch shirabako they heard it because like you know i was kind of feeling that at, at, in like within like the first just for like three episodes then once four hit and, and the conflict started like diverging itself from Shirobako in it or at least in a different way then I was like okay yeah this show is you know like Look, you know it, if, it, it, well, it, I was yeah not I was just gonna mention, like I think one of the biggest way I would say that even in terms of making an anime this is different from Shirobako is they are making original anime right and there is a lot more. I think, about the, yeah, the first one in Shirabaka was, I'm pretty sure, original, but the second but, but one wasn't manga. That adaption. is a lot glossed over the actual, like, what the creator's yeah. going through. And, like, right. it, what's yeah, important they're... is, I thought, to me, the most interesting parts of Aizuken are anytime it was about creating a story. So, anytime um, Asakusa looks at something in the town and creates a story out of it and creates this fantastical element from it. Right, and the way that the town then slowly starts to morph along with her fantastical ideas, right? Um, and I think that's like the best part of the series, and that's something Shirabako doesn't have, right? So like, I, I think it does stand out from Shirabako or other things about making it, because like, you know, to even point out some of the other ones that were mentioned in that terrible video, um, <laughs> you know, okay, so so just to name a few that I like. Bakuman's a manga I love. It's about making manga. While that does talk about how to make a story, it very much is talking about this is how to make a story that is liked, right? It's This is how to make a story with mass appeal as opposed to being about how to make, um, you know, how to keep, like, these ideas in your world and these things that you make consistent with reasons for existing. Like, that's what I thought was the most interesting. You know, and yeah, that, that is, well, because, like, with Bakuman, we see, like, kind of the base idea of what this whole serialized manga is about, where with Eizouken, we see basically the entire product which and right. you know um so that is and, the, and yeah i hadn't thought about that what i thought a lot of times was really interesting was like when she was like like anytime she was like making up this like machinery in her head right and it's like okay well then this would be a problem like someone would tell her this would be a problem she said okay so then i'll do this and i was like then this then this and it's like if someone wanted to know yeah like not what realism is but what verisimilitude is and like how that matters in art you should watch this show because i think this show does do a very good job I would say this show does a better job than anything I've ever seen of explaining that, but I think or that's... showing it, yeah, 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 yeah. So showing and explain it, right? That's that, yeah, and I think that's the big thing that stands it out from the crowd. Uh, not that it goes more technical into animation because it definitely does not. Like if you um, use, but the it shows word... that one aspect really well. If you use the words that like, here's how you can separate the monkeys who watch this show versus the people who are smart. If the people who watch this show will say things like grounded realism or like this is one of the most technical shows they've seen they're monkeys they didn't pay attention to this show the, the idea of the realism in this show when there's literally a three meter tall robot that a high school club made no look okay is ridiculous. from the very the first episode the town they are living in and the way their school is structured and and like the, the fact that there's a security club and the clubs that happen, if you spout the words realism when watching this show, you are brain dead. You did not watch there's the show. There's literally a ninja house just hanging out in where they, like... And But I think that's part of the fun for me of the show is, like, 
I almost, as it started to go on, wanted to see more of the school and the town outside of the Isokin. I wanted to see, um, like, I wanted to see, like, one of my favorite moments in the show was that the, the, the meeting that they had with the student council early on in the show, um, in episode four. But, like, the meeting that took place before they just showed the anime I thought was really good. Or just the shots, the establishing shots of the town were always super nice. And I was wanting more of those, you know? Like, those are what I thought was interesting. And that was what I really liked. And so I would say that, like, that got a lot lower. And even some of the other stuff, I think. Like, I almost think the show gets worse as it goes. Because it, it goes away from the best things the show has going for it. Well, um, I'm trying to think uh, if we have any more general things to say. Um, I mean, or like, if we should move on to spoilers. Did you know that these characters... Look, here's the thing I'll say about, like, a lot of people, will so, like, when they look at the character designs, they'll praise Yuasa. Or, like, you know, like, talk about the story of so it plays Yuasa. And sure, when you adapt something, you have to, like, you know, work the story around. Or you have... And you have the yeah, character you have designs the look designs, exactly like the manga. Like, and, and, well, there's... Yeah, and there, you know, maybe there's some little things here or there, but ultimately, you know, to, to animate them well, well. But at the same time, like, yeah, it also just... Like, yeah, It's like, like making a review say. of My Hero Academia and then saying the story is Bones' fault. Hold on. One second. Let me, let me check something to make sure. But, um... I, I do want to say one thing that I I don't know because I haven't read the manga but I do wow. want to give credit I want to give credit to Yuasa for this because I think okay so when you look at Ping Pong's manga right which I'm just looking at pictures of now his anime does look kind of different from the manga it still looks very similar but there's a lot of Yuasa thrown into it right and the way he likes to do these I don't like the way he does, like, lines and colors, right? You see it in Devil Man Cry, baby. You see it in Tatami Galaxy. You see it in Ping Pong. This show very much has the least of that in it, right? Like, that you also kind of like colors and where, like, things feel... I don't want to yeah, say less detailed, like, but... Compared to, like, Ping... Like, yeah, Ping Pong, my, like, the ones I've seen, it is, like, the least Yuasa where, you know... But um, I think just... that works in its favor because anytime then they... The way it visually shows when they're in the world of their heads... And they're in the city of their imagination. Yeah, if if the, the whole way that series that, was Yuasa, then it would have there would have been no line between the two, but uh, like right. as as the abstract. But you know, and even even those sequences weren't very Yuasa. They were just like more, right. you know, like you know they they made it more like you know sketchier, and the colors weren't as filled in, and the sound effects were all like the you know the voice actors doing the like, like, in, in, in character voices. But but um, I think that I think that like the fact that he doesn't go this Yuasa helps the show so i do want to commend him for sh having the restraint to not go full yuasa because it does help the the product he's he's making no but like this because sh that's what's funny when people go unga bunga yuasa with the show because it's easily has the like barely any yuasa in it right it's he's just mm -hmm. adapting the, the the source material because like i was watching it and i'm like this doesn't really feel as much yuasa as you know everyone's like going unga bunga because it's advertised as yuasa is no, like not. six TV series anime, right? Yeah. Would you agree that, like, it is good that he does, like, shy away from Yuasa to then give that emphasis to those other moments? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, well, because even thinking, like, if he did more of, like, because like, when I think Yuasa style, like, yeah, ping pong, but all, mind, mind game, just it, from what I can remember, is definitely, like, the most pure Yuasa thing I've seen, because I'm pretty sure it's original, too. Um, mm -hmm. Like, and then, like, I definitely don't think that style fits what the show is going for at all. So you know um, what's hilarious, kind of. This is a, this is an adaptation about people creating original anime. Shirobako is an original <laughs> anime about people creating adaptations. <laughs> Sad. Well, no, look. For anybody who's should trying we, to even compare, we soon? well, anybody, real quick, anybody who's even trying to compare Shirobako to fucking keep your hands off Izuken, just watch both, both. Yeah, I, like, was, I was gonna say, I think both they do different things and should both be watched. Yeah, well, that's all I have to say on it. So you know, yeah. Yeah, well, I think to, to add to your point really quick about both is like I think that they both say different things about making a story and are both different, and I think that. To just say, oh, this is, like, like comparing the two, sure, you can do it, and there are benefits to comparing to show how they're different, but I think that saying that one over the other, and I have Shirobako at, like, a high nine, and this is not that, um, but I think that, like, 
when you say, yeah, oh, just watch your Baku or just watch Isaac Cannon. It's like both are tr- telling – are about very different things in relation to making an anime and about making art. It, it almost – in the beginning episodes, this went away as it went, but in the beginning episodes, this reminded me of if we saw the anime that the people in Shirabako made when they were in high school. As opposed to – because, like, these guys aren't pros, right? They aren't in the pro world, so they're not – Dealing with a lot of the things that we see in the actual full series. Yeah, if anything, it's kind of like self-imposed almost with like the deadlines they have. Where yeah, in Shirabako, it, it takes them a while, and they make the. I don't. We don't. Yeah, again, we don't see it, but you know, they they have one deadline. And presumably, had the whole school year to make it. Where with with this is like that. We only see them over the course of a few months, and they make three things. I think or yeah, was it three? Yeah. Um, well, because it draws the dip. They even establish that. They draws a definite line between the fact that they're high schoolers making anime versus like real life, like real adult. Because like for, right. when you so watch your Obako, compare... yeah. I don't well, because when you watch your Obako, it's very much like a bunch of jaded adults finding po- finding positivity. We are as Azokan is the opposite. It's a bunch of like positive, like like kids with like brightness in their eyes realizing how hard the real world is basically or, yeah how how i would frame it is like yeah shirabako is adults in a in a system you know that fund that you know that you know punishes like them trying to put in effort still trying to f- use you know find the passion to put in that effort where with Azoken, it's trying to find the balance from the get go like they cuz they're first now entering that si- that kind of system and you know they're trying to like having to compromise their artistic vision and recognizing that like you know we're gonna we're continuing to get better so you know maybe we you know why fuss over the finer details when we can just like just get it done and then move on to the next thing and keep getting better and because you know they'll never be satisfied so just keep going keep going and keep making things keep you know um pushing forward and such shit yeah yeah Gurren Lagann okay so spoilers <laughs> Yeah, spoiler time. I mean, I was thinking about the rest, like you know, restraint versus you know, you could kind of frame it that way because Gurren Lagann is like that, where you could, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, spoilers. So, I, so my favorite parts are when it's about the city and the way that like they have to work with these people in this town and this community and like. That's I think the best part of the show, right? And then obviously the fact that the movie they make at the end is about friendship. But, um, like, I loved the town, and I think we didn't see enough of it, and that's, like, my biggest issue with the show, is that, at the end of the day, I just wanted to see, like, I would be okay with something else set just in this town, because I thought even the establishing shots and everything we see of it was so good, that that's all I really wanted to see at a certain point, and not see the, I didn't give a fuck about the anime they were making, I just wanted to see where they were making it. But I also think that's great, because, like, I love that, on a certain level, like, they recognize that the town is interesting enough that they want to make their show about the town, you know? And, like, all the settings are in where they live, and I think that, that helps a lot. Because, like, I believe that they care a lot about where they live, and they find it interesting, because I also find it interesting. Well, see, uh, I've heard... The thing about that is, like, I don't know. Because uh, maybe... Because I've heard that complaint before about a certain show that I never shut up about. <laughs> I love life sunshine Where people people will complain about like you know the reason why it falls flat in the end is because unga bunga we don't see the rest of the people in the town and i'm like well that's not necessarily the main i don't think there's focus. a sense because my my well, point is more so that like i liked it a lot when it was more like because it did happen later on when they were exploring the town and she found the idea through the town um and i think that like that was a major part of the series is that like by exploring her town she's finding these things that she wants to turn into anime and that's why i think like the idea of the very similar like the 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 show showing off this very similitude is so cool is because she's using real life to create her art so she has already like a realistic base and then she adds fantastical elements and then has to draw that back and add these yeah, things like, to kind of make it more believable inside the world. Look, right. Well, and yeah, part, there's times uh, where like the whole thing with the robot was like, yeah, you know, robots are like, fundamentally stupid and unrealistic. So like, like there have to be concessions made or what are like, you going to say? It's because that's what I was going to say. Because it's like they're basically roasting this man because it's like, I just want to put it the robot and it'll be real. And they're like, well, dude, like. It's not going to happen, Yeah, he's bro. trying to justify it, and they're countering his logic, and he's just like, look, cool robots. And they're like, yeah, cool robots. Let's just do cool robots then. Yeah, and... fucking Chadley. Good and well, I also love the moment 
I also love the moment where, um, how later on, right? She's making, like, Asakusa showing off the energy weapons. And Kanamori's like, okay, dog, like, they need to shoot a laser. And she's like, no, because uh, they wouldn't shoot a laser. I don't care. I'm going to try to find this way around the laser. Like, okay, I think a good way to explain it is, like, if you had to pick a singular character as the main character in this show, it's the director of the series. That's not the case in Shirabaka, right? The producer's the main character. Right, because she's the one, you know, perspective going around and making sure everything's getting fucking done. Right. <laughs> so it gives us this very different perspective of what it's like to be creating things. So in that sense, like, I understand what people... Like, okay, I see where they're coming from when they say it's more technical. It just shows they haven't seen Shirabako. Or paid attention to Shirabako. Right. Also, before we stray away from the robot too much, I, I like the joke where he's like, real robots, and then they, they show visuals of actual real robots, and he's like, no, like, piloted, and then it's just a fucking crane. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. funny. That's funny. And then he's like, no, 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 realistic, like Gundam. <laughs> realistic? <laughs> Sorry. That's what, I really hate realism fuckers, because I don't understand what universe they live in. Where they think, sh- where they watch shows and they go, that's realistic. And then I watch the show and I'm like, what part of it? You mean the part where they were shooting lasers and like they had superpowers? <laughs> like, no, like that's... it is funny that, oh, Gundam is a real robot show. And I'm like, he, what are you, he, I mean, re- uh, okay, okay. I mean, okay. if Isaac is realistic, Gundam's realistic. Yeah, no, right. fair, fair, completely fair. But also, like, have you watched Gundam? Nobody's watched Gundam. Didn't you know, be, ever since Love Life came out, it destroyed all reason to watch any Gundam. <laughs> they killed that guy. That's what, they, that's what I fucking hate about Azo again, right? They never talk about how idols fucking killed everything. Yeah, they should have just brought that up in the robot episode. Like, well, we can't do a robot anime because idols killed Mecha. Yeah, like, they have the idol helping the robot And then, anime. like, everyone stupid. shoots a dirty Fuck look at Mizusaki, show. and she's like, er... Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like they're using the idol to Mecca. promote the mech anime. I don't understand because she like she didn't kill it. She like promoted it. Fucking stupid ass anime. I hate this shit. So unrealistic. God, I cannot believe there are people who watch this show and said realism. Like, well, it's like they missed the entire point of the show. Because like you're, you're thinking... did they not see the scene? Did they not see the scene at the end of the show? Where it zooms out of their life and all of the shit they made was in outer space. No, Vindy, because it's real. Look, I've learned something from any from any Twitter and any any tubers and people who just watch anime in general. They don't have brains. Everyone in the world is just Mizusaki and fucking Asakusa, and we're just Kanamori sitting here, just like why, why? I think most people just don't you know just turn your brain off dude just turn your brain off what that's what you should do when you watch anime more was it a plot twist for any where anyone else when the person in the sound club turned out to be a girl no oh (laughs) yes i i it was for me are you serious definitely thought it was a boy definitely thought it was a boy yeah i thought it was numanji what (laughs) uh wow Um, I mean, yeah, no, I liked the show. I think there was, you know, it didn't, it was weird. Cause I, after the first like four episodes, especially like after, look, I think maybe the best, actually thinking about it back, I think just the best scene in that show in its entirety is just the, the last half of episode four, like them going to that meeting and then them premiering the, and the way that like the anime is kind of affecting real life because it's drawing these people into the world that they see. Um, okay uh, okay yeah sure i mean i i personally uh, don't like that trope because that's i don't that's not a thing i've never felt that way about anything well craft store just because you don't care about anything you watch um oh well, you're stupid i'm not gonna lie i wasn't feeling when they were doing it either but not for because i don't like, like those scenes my favorite episode personally was at, well, i loved the um episode eight when the ro- wait, like because they didn't do that with the robot, they just showed it to you and it, and they saw people react, show you reactions to it. And I'm like, yeah, that's that. I that prefer I like, this. Yeah. And and you had Mizusaki's parents watching and seeing okay their daughter in her create what she made. And, I want you to guess like, see- right now, both of you, God. what my favorite episode in the series was. Episode eight. That's okay. That's okay. Well, technically, it's attached to another episode because it's like episode where Kanamori was sick. 
Episode seven and episode eight are two of my favorite. Episodes. Actually, is episode seven the one about her uh, mother? It's oh wait, I'm sorry, grandmother. It's the one where we find out why she's like so yeah, obsessed her with getting into shit. yeah, 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 with her mother. With Gren- the gr- <laughs> what the fuck? Damn it! I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Don't kill me. Kill the person who called her her mother in his video in his review. Even though her mother is also in the show. Can we just link his fucking stupid review in the co- in the description no. of this? No. That would give it views. That's true. And not and none of the four of us want that. Us three and the maker of the video. He doesn't want people to watch his his passionless videos, even though he, oh he's making God. them about. Oh my um, God! Look, what? There's yeah. no way he believes it. Like he play, he fucking reads off of Wikipedia. He's he doesn't care. He knows. Did I it. tell you? So I make I'm actually planning on making a video called like Azo Ken's lesson to lesson to YouTubers, where I kind of just. <laughs> Or creators and also yeah. or creators, yeah. And creators would fit because it YouTubers, encompasses YouTubers artists is more and like YouTubers. YouTubers gets people's attention more because Unga Munga. Look, listen, Azuken is great because it tells you because Kanamori is like your passion don't mean shit if nobody's gonna watch it, right? If nobody no, watches he... it, why would you do it? You want to shout and like and there's the part where where where. Fucking Su- or Subami says that she's like, when I do my animation, I want to tell the world I'm here. This is me. Well, I think it's what's interesting about it is that it, it's not just one or the other. It's a give and take, right? It's about this mix because there are times where where Kanamori even realizes, okay, it's not just about the money or the views or everything like that. Like it is this give and take relationship where you have to do some stuff for passion, some stuff to be seen well it's a like, mix you have to find the balance yeah, yeah yeah that's what i'm saying you have to find the balance but that's why so it's it's is like you have to have the passion but you can't just justify people not watching your shit because well unlike these other people i have passion because it's like what do you mean like because like i see these smaller smaller people they say oh unlike people like gigguk i have i have passion he just does it for the money and i'm like you think gigguk only does youtube for the money or anyone who's like because like or like i love going through the entire process of making a video just for money or people who like or even like people when people say like shit like the mcu when they like like you think the directors of infinity war the fucking they just do this shit yeah the russo brothers they just do this shit for money like there's no you think the actors just do it only for the money like you see them in the interviews and they're talking about how great it is to work on these movies you think they only do it for the money because you person who nobody watches has passion unlike them like it's just it makes me fucking mad makes you sick infected with where i live let me live without you're ew empty uh, selfish okay well you can calm down so yeah i mean i definitely enjoyed this show there was some stuff in it i thought was really good uh you know i i just i think the show at the end didn't really hit me like i was expecting to you know and maybe it's because i was expecting you know because i would say both ping pong and tatami galaxy hit hard at the end right like they definitely amp up a lot of their like conflict and stuff to the end to hit you a lot there yeah no to and i think Galaxy. that's how most stories are just made in general and i think this show at least for me and it sounds like for y'all too just didn't have an ending that hit me like i was because I, I had the show at like i was expecting to get the show close to a nine watching through and it dropped to an eight by the end and i know at one point what you had it a score higher than you gave it at the end I think all of our scores went down because I well I was thinking like a six to seven at the start then I, then I was like okay went to hit episode four and I got to see the actual like conflict I was like okay this is more of a seven and then I just sort of like felt just underwhelmed at the end and I was like yeah I'll, I'll just give it a six I can and actually what, yeah. tell you why I don't like it as much as I probably should because I had it in an eight from the first two episodes when I first watched it weekly so then after I started watching it more I gave it a seven because I realized I didn't care as much. And then by the end, I was like, yeah, that's a show. It's like, it does good things and it does them well. But I think I, I tweeted this. Out, I was like, a big factor you'll see in shows that I don't like is that I don't, I don't attach myself to the characters. And at the end of the day, while I like, you know, Kanamori and I like Asakusa and I like I love Kanamori. fucking, you know, I like 
Mizusaki, I don't like them enough to like go monkey with I see like not like you know what I mean like if, like obsessed be like wow what a good character like if but there was a whole right. episode where they were in the bath what you didn't get shut up shut up <laughs> like if I saw a picture someone posted a picture of Kenpachi I would lose my shit and just spurg about how cool Kenpachi is and how much of a great character he is if I someone showed me a picture of like fucking you know uh like fucking Homura Onodera like, yeah like Kirito I'm, yeah yeah. God, I love Kirito, dude. Yeah. Kirito's such a chad. No, but, like, the thing is, I, Izoken, like, the reason why maybe, and I, I know I've said comparing it to Shirobako is dumb, but, like, the reason why I really like Shirobako and I don't like this as much is mainly just because something, like, Shirobako, at least to me, felt, is, like, hits more, because I'm, I'm a unga bunga, make me cry, bitch. This didn't make me feel anything other than, wow. Yeah, I, I I feel that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think part of the problem for me is like I definitely thought at one point the show had the potential to, you know, like early on I was really getting into it and I was like, wow, this show could really like hit, you know. Episode and seven and eight show, did it though, kind of like it kind of. But I I think the show, but those aren't the climax, and I think the show is missing an emotional climax. Yeah, it just ha- it, like it has a climax. Okay, like don't don't get me wrong and think I'm saying it doesn't. It does have a climax, mm-hmm. but something about it like. Would you well, like, okay. it's like almost they even like, had problems in like the eleventh hour, and then it's just okay. We just went with it, and it's like you you do you kind of feel like it's kind of like emotional anticlimax almost, like they yes, just put out the thing and it's but like not intentionally, like it just sort of happens. Like every time something something like the only part where it doesn't even do it, like it does kind of give you like an emotional climax, is episode seven and eight, and that's why I like those. I think well, if anything, gives you one as well. look, I look. think four gives you one as well. Well, I was going to say the thing with 7 and 8, it's like 7 and 8 like kind of finishes the the initial conflict with uh, Mizuzaki not being allowed to be in the club. And then here's the, like, you see... What do you mean in it? A... I'm getting a little angry right now. The show has three very clear arcs with three very clear conflicts, I'm, right? No, I'm saying, The first like, one is them being registered as a club. And I, I said they... emotional climax. You said initial conflict. Well, for, with, yeah, referring to with the emotional, that, though. Yes, I said. Emo- yes, no, I said. Saying, I was explaining you, Craft Dwarf. I know. <laughs> I'm mad. Go like, on. what is the conflict resolved in episode twelve that's been set up since the first episode? There isn't one. But that's I'm what saying my in the point first is. Four episodes. I'm saying in the first four episodes there is a conflict that's resolved. Y'all are only acting like seven eight is the only moment that has anything. What episode four has shit too. <gasps> well, I kind of forget what happened in episode four. So <laughs> that's when they go. Okay. So they're trying to become a club. They're trying to get funding so they can make more anime. They had to turn what they originally wanted to do into this super short PV. They take it to the peep place and they actually connect with people and get people to like. Okay, it. yeah, that's and right. I remember because it, it's an emotional climax. It just didn't anime. make me feel emotional. It's not as powerful yes. as episode seven. And but eight, I'm, is saying what I'm saying that it still has it there, unlike at the end. Oh my god! But it's not as powerful as seven and eight. <laughs> I'm. Not, I don't care if it's more or less powerful. I'm saying seven and eight isn't the only moment that fucking has it. But I'm saying it's the only moment that's powerful. And in fact, it's like the most. That's not what you said. You said that. Only... Well, that's what you said. I it's meant. emotional anticlimax well, except for seven and eight. When that's not true. Well, it felt like, you know. How about yeah. what stops talking? So did you? Uh, well, <laughs> what it, you pretty you were pretty clear with Kanamori. Vindi, did you have a favorite character? Yeah, Kanamori Shidini. I was gonna mention before I got angry at what being Shinji Hiroko's child being retarded and Satsuki's child. Um, I was just say that like I think like the characters is a good point because I think that like my favorite point among all three characters is Kanamori's shit eating grin, and that's something you see from the start that doesn't go away. And I think that like the characters definitely are missing something that helps you really attach to them. It might be like a powerful, compelling arc that they go through, or it could be any number of things because i don't know yeah see I, I like all three of them um like i'm not sure which i would choose as a favorite because well, i like, like them I, but i don't love any of them no that you know i'm just saying i was just trying to i trying yeah, to say yeah, like so you know let's talk about a favorite you know a favorite character and i think i was gonna say something else um i forget whatever oh i did like a uh, conmore's backstory episode 
I did like that too. Oh, yeah, that well, because I guess, and I guess that's kind of the whole thing conflict of the show too. Because you see with her grandfather, he was you know too much passion and he, he never sold anything. And then we see young Kanamori like tra- selling things, but no, that's you know that doesn't work out either. Because you know no, why, if you're if you only have things to sell and not not necessarily like any value in what you're you know creating or you're you know it's like then what value do you have to you know in that? So like you know passion sort of creates I guess uh, you could say. Um, like that's part of why, like me, Mizusaki was just they they you know specified that Mizusaki was just to call attention to the product they were making that had all the passion they were putting into, and that, you know it was that that balance of selling it and yeah, I also like that sort of bend to it with the the school like the school framed it as like you know don't rush to adulthood because that's kind of what they were doing, but also like it, it, it like Kanamori's also spitting facts where she's saying that like well yeah but then you you feed us all this shit about you know this child is shit and then you send uh, you know kids into the real like that's just, that's way too real actually <laughs> with how like high school just does not prepare you for the real world because it feeds you so much idealism and you know high school in particular should be that point where there's transitioning you to like deal with reality and you know though I, I on one hand I do understand the sentiment of you know don't grow, grow up too quickly on the other hand I don't know uh, that just I just made me think but uh, I have a feeling we're done. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I think I've uh, I've exhausted all my brain power for today. Um, this is one of those shows. I, there are some things sometimes where it's like I don't want to hear anyone fucking talk about it because I know, like, while I'm watching, I'm like, I know why this is popular, and it's popular because people don't get it. Um, not that people don't get it, but people like get to be like. People like to be really, really stupid about things and not, like, look at it for what it is, I think. They look at it for what they see in it, yeah. Yeah, as opposed to what it actually is. And I think that, like, this show is one of those examples. Uh, what is Riddy posting images of right now? A Kino fucking anime we should be watching instead. What the I fuck hate is you. I hate you. But no, what is look, it? Uh, it's called Emo Sae. If we watched it, it would be... So Kino, it's I dropped it on episode one, so like The show changes a lot from episode one, so you wouldn't understand why it's great if you didn't keep watching. But it's good. But anime I might pick get it better the after club. episode one. What are you talking about? I might pick it for the Weep Club because oh, no. I think everyone would like it. I'm picking Ori Emo later on, so you know <laughs> Well Emo Sai is about friendship, so Ori Emo is about cucking. Oh, Craft store's favorite. Well, Wait, think, hold on. Uh, what? Is it time Repeat for? Uh, is it time for final thoughts yet? Final thoughts. Okay, yeah, final thoughts. Um, yeah, I gave it a six out of ten. I, you know, liked it enough. Um, but I wouldn't say any, any like the like the best parts. Like, you know, it didn't like yeah, it didn't grab me at you know from the beginning. Like, it, you know, it got I, I liked it a bit after that. But you know, at the end of it, it's just like yeah, it was a show. I watched it. It was good. You know, maybe if it gets like a season two that does give it a better like climax, you know, because it is an ongoing manga, so um, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. Um, so you know, there's that. There's always that kind of possibility, but eh. Mindy, I gave it an eight out of ten. I think it's okay. Um, what? Not okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not trolling, dude. My brain doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I wasn't bored at all. Like, why, like I, I legitimately enjoyed every episode, and like I turned on the next episode and was super engaged in it. But at the same time, I, um, I don't know. It, it, I definitely felt like the show was like missing something that really pushed it above what it was for me. Uh, however, like I, again, like I watched every episode. I was super engaged. Um, like I was really, really enjoying myself, but I didn't get the reaction at the end I was expecting. So, yeah, yeah. whatever. What the what? Six out of ten. It does good things, but I'm not emotionally attached to it in any way other than the things that it says that are straight facts I agree with heavily. It is the least Yuasa thing, yet despite that, I still don't like it as much as Ping Pong, which is probably one of the more Yuasa things around. So like, Oh, yeah, well, I don't know. I would say it's my, it's my least favorite of the three Yuasa I've seen. It's my second favorite but of the three things I've seen. I'm not small-brained about Tatami Galaxy, so. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah, it was pretty easy to watch for me. Like, I, I, you know, even though I gave it the lowest score, I still just, like, had no problem going from episode to episode. You could say it was a easy-breezy watch. 
Okay, right, that's that it. That was, that was fucking. That was fucking awful. <laughs> that holy shit. Next time we're watching, uh, we're watching, myself. we're watching Hinamari sketch. Holy shit. Oh I my god. <laughs> that was the worst thing that's ever happened. Right now, me and Vinny. At are least the manji appreciates my dad jokes. The lollies in your fucking basement appreciate your dad jokes. I don't. I hate you. I hate you. I fucking hate you. I'm leaving. All right, group suicide time. Let's go, boys. See you later. All right, here Thank we you. go. We're gonna go watch Iron Man's fucking entire ca channel catalog. Goodbye, boys. <laughs>